Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my YouTube channel where I share about all of my knitting and crocheting adventures. Today is Monday, June 22nd. Not my normal recording day. If you're a regular, you will realize that, but we are heading out of town tomorrow to go to West Virginia. So I won't be here to do my normal recording schedule. So I thought I would record today and then just upload it on Thursday like normal so that you guys will still have an episode this week. Plus I have a ton to share with you guys today and I did not want to leave it for another week and then have even more. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in today. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. And we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you head over there, hit the groups tab up at the top, search crazy sock lady. Actually, now that I say that, I don't think there is a groups tab at the top anymore because Ravelry just redid everything. If you have not been on there in a while, head over and check it out. It is a completely new look. So I think you have to hit the community tab and then groups and then search for Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. But I always have links right down below this video in the down bar here on YouTube to everywhere that you can find me. A link to the Ravelry group, links to project pages, shops that are talked about, all of that is down below. Today I actually have a finished object to share with you. I have some works in progress. I'm going to show you all of the knitting that I am taking on our trip and then I have some things that have come in the mail to share with you. So as always, first we're going to update you with all of the things going on in the Ravelry group. We still have three knit alongs going on. We have the Rainbow Connection Sock Knit Along. This is for one of my patterns, the Rainbow Connection Socks. Let me grab that. I think I always forget to grab it off the wall before I begin. This pattern right here. Just have to knit one of these, a pair of these socks and you can enter that into the finished object thread. And we had a prize come in for that knit along. I'm very excited because it is rainbow themed. This is from Stephanie, the creative knitter. She sent over, she sent two of these little stitch markers that are rainbows, one for me and then one for the giveaway. And then she also sent this rainbow mini skein set. So I will link her shop down below. I think this is perfect for this knit along. And I'm gonna put this the one for me on my socks that I'm taking with me, my June socks. That knit along ends July 31st. So you still have this whole next month of July to enter a pair of finished rainbow connection socks into that knit along. Then we also have the Stash Busters Cal. This is our year long knit along for this year. And it's basically just use your stash. I'll put a link to a YouTube video down below that goes more into detail on all of the different things regarding the cowl. There's different ways that you can earn some extra entries with that one. Then last but certainly not least, we have the Summer Sock Camp knit along going on in the Ravelry group. This one ends August 31st and it's just knit some socks. There's a ton of fun chatter going on over in all of the different cabins for Summer Sock Camp. I'll link the welcome desk and all of the details down below. We did receive a prize. I actually had this before the last podcast, but it the box was sitting right beside me and it just slipped my mind to even share this. I don't know why, but Plucky Knitter sent a huge box of goodies for the Summer Sock Camp Knit Along. They sent... A ton of yarn. These fun cups say Plucky Knitter on the front. And then they also sent some pins that say Life is S'more fun with plucky. Life is s'more fun with plucky and they have a little s'more on them. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I know there's a glare. So there's enough for quite a few door prizes here. So what I'm going to do with this, 
I'm not gonna do it until we get back from our trip, but I decided I'm going to use these for the chatter thread for like a mid camp type thing. So it'll be within the first little bit of July. I will go through the chatter thread and the hashtag on Instagram and just randomly draw some winners and then contact you to get your mailing address and send you out a little prize that will consist of one skein of yarn, a cup, and then the fun little s'more pin. I think it's such a fun little door prize for camp. And the yarn, it is, I think it's all on the same base. It is all on their feet base, which is 425 yards. It is 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon. Yep, all on the same base. I've never used that base with Plucky. It's very fun, bright, summery colors that they sent. Absolutely perfect. So keep an eye out for that once I'm back from my trip. And I think that is it for, oh, the new tutorial that went up this week. With Summer Sock Camp, I'm putting up new tutorials, trying to do one a week throughout June and July. And the one that went up this week, it'll go up tomorrow. So it'll already be up by the time this podcast goes up. It is how to change colors when you want to do a contrasting heel, cuff, and toe. Specifically a slip stitch, heel flap, and heel turn. I have had so many questions, people wanting to know how to change colors for those different sections, and in particular the heel. So I went ahead and did a tutorial for that. So I will link it down below if you want to head over and check that out. I also have had questions on if you can get heels, cuffs, and toes out of a 20 gram mini like that comes with a kit or you know that you have laying around so what i did for this is i weighed my mini as i went after i finished each section to see if i could get all three with one 20 gram mini so head over and check it out to see if i was able to do that all right finished objects i have eric's socks that i knit him for father's day are done. This was out of Regia, Arnie, and Carlos design line and the color was 03654. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Their design line is just so fun. You would never look at the skein of yarn and be able to figure out how it's going to look when it's knit up. I think they turned out great. They're not exactly matching, but I don't mind and neither does Eric. So for these, I did US1 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches. I did 20 rounds for the cuff, 60 rounds for the leg, slip stitch, heel flap, gusset, and then rounded toe. That's my only finished object this week. Now, works in progress, I have a, quite a few here. I said I'm going to show you all of the knitting that I'm taking with me, and I'm even questioning if this is enough, which is probably pretty ridiculous. So the first thing that I'm taking is my beekeeper cardigan. You guys have seen this one before. It's in my fringe supply co bag. I have not, I was doing the 30 minutes a day, like every morning sitting and having my coffee and knitting on this. I did not do that yesterday or today because I wanted to save the body for airplane knitting, airport knitting, all of that stuff. So I have a split for the sleeves. I'm twisted here. So here it is. So far, show you the patterning on the back. I'm not too much past where I split. But the yarn I'm using for this is Utopia in their BFF BFL base. Let me see if I got that right. BFL BFF, I had it backwards. And the colorway is Garnet.
And I'm using my Knitter's Pride Zing Interchangeable needles for this. Speaking of, I need to make sure I stick my needle size in here for the ribbing, just in case I would get far enough that I would need that. It probably won't happen. I'm gonna write that down on my list. Does anyone else do this when they go on trips? You think you're gonna get a ton of knitting done, but you never get quite as much as you think you're going to. I have a feeling that's what's gonna happen here. But I did try this on and it's looking like it's gonna fit good because right now it's a pretty, not like super snug fit, but it is fitted, which is, I wanted it more of a fitted than a ton of positive ease. So right now it's pretty fitted. It will grow when I block it. So I think it's gonna be good. I did have some issues and looking at it, I wish I would have done another little bee right here. So right in that section, I wish I would have done a bee. Little bee stitch. The issue that I had with the pattern was it got to a certain point where she was no longer telling you how many pattern repeats to do. She just said to fit them in as you could with the increases that were happening. So I don't know, it was kind of hard to judge where to put those little bees once you got to that point. So I am wishing I would have added another one in right there to kind of continue it down. But I mean, it doesn't look bad. And in the grand scheme of the sweater, nobody will notice. But then also when you went to do the underarm she had an amount for you to cast on when you split for the sleeves, but then said if you need to adjust that to keep the bees in line, do that. Maybe I was just being lazy and not wanting to put in the extra work, but I wish all of that would have been figured out in the pattern for you. I wish you would not have had to have put your thinking cap on and kind of figure that out. I ended up not even having to cast any on. To keep in pattern, I would have had to have cast on I think it was like three on each side, which, you know, wouldn't have made a huge difference in the sweater, but with the gauge, it would have added like probably almost an inch to the finished size of the body. And I didn't want that. So I actually ended up having to decrease a stitch in order to keep these bees in line. Otherwise I was gonna be adding a whole other, you know, pattern repeat. So it worked out, hopefully, hopefully the fit's okay. I just wish that all of that would have been figured out for the sizes within the pattern. But I'm loving the feel of the fabric. I'm loving how it's looking so far. Hopefully I will get a good amount of work done on that. Then I have my June Desert Vista Dye Work socks ready to go in my Daisy and Girl, Daisy Girl and Company bag. And I have my yarn in these fun little yarn cozies there that my friend Karen sent me. The colorway I'm using for June is Snorin Sunset. And this was the like special colorway you got if you finished all of the months in the 2019 knit along. Very pretty. I have both cuffs done. I have them, I'm doing them two at a time. And I'm using this Needle Cozy from Cookie and Bee for the first time. And it fits both cuffs in here. I, none of my cozies do that. So I love that this is kind of extra long here. Here's my two cuffs. I cast the first cuff on on Saturday and finished it. And then I put it aside on two DPNs, did the second cuff yesterday, and then I've got them both set up now back on this 40 inch. I'm using a Chalgu 40 inch cable, US1 2.25 millimeter needle. And now they're ready to go for two at a time. I'm gonna be doing the complete sock two at a time, heel flap and gusset as well. Trying to refresh myself with that because it's been a bit and then I'm gonna do a tutorial for y'all hopefully within July for one of the sock camp tutorials for two at a time socks. 
I cast on 64 stitches, knit two purl two ribbing for 20 rows. Now it's ready to go for tomorrow. This and my sweater are what are coming on the plane with me for all of the airport knitting and all of that. So those are ready to go. Then in my O Knit project bag from So Crazy Crafter, I have my Legacy Fiber Art sock. And I actually have one done. Let me put it on a blocker here. This is why I recorded the tutorial for contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. I just finished this last night. Isn't that so pretty? This is Legacy Fiber Arts in their Kirk colorway, which is this main color, and then it's their sock kit that came with this blue. I think I bought this at Needles Up last year. I did 64 stitches, US 1, 2.25 millimeter. I only did 10 rounds of the Knit 2 Pearl 2 for the cuff. Slip stitch heel flap, and then rounded toe. I've got the second one started. Oh, here it is. But I've only got the cuff done and one round of the leg. <laughs> This will probably be my car knitting when we get to the airport in Pittsburgh tomorrow and make the drive down to West Virginia. I'll just knit along on the leg for the couple of hours that we have in the car. So that's another sock going, just one sock left to go in that one. And then I have in my bag from Uprooted Fibers another pair of socks. I don't remember if I showed this on the last podcast because if I did I'm probably at the same spot but I'll go ahead and show it anyways because it is another project that's going with me. This is just another pair of vanilla socks on again US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. These are Knitter's Pride Zing DPNs. And this yarn is Dragon Horde yarn in the tarot colorway. And as always, 64 stitches, knit two purl two ribbing for 20 rounds. And I've just gotten a little bit done on the leg. So those are the four projects that I am taking. And I don't know why I'm thinking, is that enough? <laughs> That's probably enough. I have. You know, two whole socks I can knit here, my June socks, one other sock, and a sweater. There is no way I would get all of that done on my trip. That would be awesome if I did, but it won't happen. I may throw just one more skein of yarn in my suitcase, just in case. Because you never know. You have to be prepared as a knitter, right? <laughs> so that is all of my works in progress. I received a couple of things in the mail that I want to show you. So throughout this year, I've been receiving the Clark and L mini skein sets. She's doing one for each season. They're such a fun, I love the idea behind them. She started them the first of the year and it's kind of, for me, been like a run on from Advent. You're not opening one every day, you're opening one a week throughout the season. So it's just kind of like a year long Advent. I have the summer ones here. They come packaged in beautiful brown bag. And then each one is individually numbered and packaged. There is number one. And ready for you to open one a week throughout the season. So like I said, these are the summer ones. I will link her shop down below. They're all in there ready to go. I put them I always take them out of here and put them in a yarn bowl over here on my cabinet. And then I can just open one a week. So I'll put the link for that down below if you guys are interested in heading over and checking out Clark and Elle's season of minis. 
The last thing I want to show you, I was contacted by a company called Slice. They make ceramic scissors and they wanted to know if I would be interested in trying out a couple of their products. So I said, of course, I've never heard of ceramic scissors. Let's give these a try. So what they sent me, they sent me just a pair of smaller scissors. And then they also sent me their seam ripper. I've tried out both of them. Here's the seam ripper. Now I am not a sewist, so I've used this with yarn and it does cut yarn. I will say that. Here's what it looks like. And it has this here on the side and you push that up. It is a ceramic blade and they are replaceable, the blades are. And with their ceramic scissors and blades, the idea behind that is they're safer than metal needles. I can tell you, or excuse me, metal blades and scissors. I can tell you they're definitely lighter than what you would get with a metal pair of scissors. Here's the scissors that they send. I love that they are just a nice clean look. Like I said, they are super lightweight and they cut very well. I've been keeping these in, I have a little like wooden basket type thing beside my, where I sit in the living room. I've been keeping these down in there and I'm going to order, they have an even smaller pair that has pointed blades. I would say they're maybe that big, that could be way off but they're definitely a smaller pair with pointed blades i'm going to order a pair of those so i can keep them in a project bag these are just a little big for me to put down in a project bag but i will be ordering the smaller pair because i love these so much and i'm probably going to order like a big regular pair of scissors from them as well so i will link that down below if you're interested in checking out slice they had so many different options for things if you're a sewist, I would definitely recommend the seam ripper. And I think that about wraps it up for today. Not a ton of chatter. We are just getting ready for our trip tomorrow. I have my knitting ready pretty much. There's a couple little things I need to make sure notions wise I have in my project bags and those smaller needles for my sweater. But other than that, my knitting is ready to go. I have not packed any clothes for anybody or anything else. <laughs> So that is on the agenda for this afternoon is to get everybody packed and ready to go. And then we head out tomorrow morning. So I hope that you guys have a great week and I will see you again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.